helpful to, to everyone at ICTP, especially including you, uh, P Diploma students. So, okay. And the speaker today, I'm very happy to introduce uh, our very own uh, Pavel Putrov, who's going to speak on some classical invariants of links and their higher dimensional analogs. So, the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction. So, I will talk about uh, uh, yeah, links and their high dimensional analogs. So, but before I start some systematic uh, presentation, let me uh, mention some motivation and uh, slash applications. On kind of why people are interested in this uh, in links and they are high dimensional analogs. So first, uh, well, in principle, uh, so there is a big interest in the subject in mathematics, which is maybe called low dimensional topology. There are many places where these links arise there, so they're interested on their own, but they're also related, very closely related to the topology of uh, three and uh, four manifolds via so-called surgery uh, procedure. Then these uh, kind of links and the environment, they appear in in a certain notion which uh, arose in physics, but it's also, also found many applications in mathematics. And in particular, this is a notion of uh, topological quantum field theory. And in particular, there are some kind of recent interest in this. Uh, uh, in this notion related to some uh, particular application to some condensed matter system and also kind of some more uh, fashionable topics such as uh, uh, what is called topological quantum computing many other things. So this is uh, what I'm not uh, going to talk about. So I'm just going to consider uh, these links on their own. So you know, probably many of you have encountered uh, kind of a notion of uh, the usual notion of link, but let me uh, uh, define it anyway. So there are kind of uh, different variations for me. Uh, so what I will use is uh, the following. So an L component, so L is some uh, positive integer number, L component Link is a, so I will assume that it's smooth to avoid some technical, technical difficulties. Smooth uh, embedding of, uh, so I do not by link usually by letter L, smooth embedding of a disjoint union of L copies of a circle into R3, the three-dimensional Euclidean space. And uh, so usually, so, the, so we have uh, the, the, the following embedding and the image of this uh, map, I will usually denote, uh, so the components of the image I will denote by L with subindex I. So LI is the image of uh, is copy of, of S1 here. So let me give you some simple example. So for example, this is a two component link, it will be a two component link, which will look something like this. It will be a component, the image of component one, this is some circle embedded in R3, and there will be a second component, which will look something like this. Out. There are two circles embedded in R3, which are, of course I visualize them on two dimensional planes, but uh, uh, this is a, should be naturally understood as a three dimensional uh, configuration. Okay. But of course, uh, uh, since we want to 
we want to consider some, I mean, of course, this embedding, there are too many of them. We want to consider some robust information. So what we actually want to consider, we want to consider links up to what is called ambient uh, isotopy, which I will define in a moment. But morally, you should understand that you, you, need, you want to consider these uh, configurations up to all continuous kind of distortions or deformations where I allow to move things around, but I don't allow uh, the, the, the uh, strands of the, of the links to cross each other. More formally, although we're not going to use this uh, definition directly, uh, let me write. So links L and L prime are uh, what is called ambient isotopic if and only if by definition. And uh, so this will, be, this will define a equivalence relation on, uh, on all possible embeddings like this. And usually, and what we want to consider links up to uh, kind of links, which are ambient isotopic to be equivalent links. Uh, if and only if there exist uh, continuous map, Uh, let me denote it uh, G from R3 times an interval to R3 such that uh, for any T in this interval, if I take the restriction uh, of this map to a particular uh, element here, so this would be a map from R3 to R3, is a homeomorphism. So to remind you, the homeomorphism is a continuous map for which the inverse exists, and it's also continuous. And more let's satisfy the following properties. So G uh, at restricted to zero, so if I take a zero here, is a just identity map on R3 and G restricted to the end of the interval uh, satisfies the following initial Z. So L, if I understand links here as a maps uh, from the bunch of circles to R3, uh, the composition of L prime uh, of L with G restricted to one is L prime. So morally, again, this is just means that we kind of, we allow a certain distortion of our ambient space so that we can bring uh, uh, the original link L to a link L prime. And uh, of course, they, so given some sort of presentation of a link, it's natural to ask, are they equivalent or not? And this is a kind of the type of, uh, one of the basic questions in the not or link theory. For example, one can consider this following simple link, uh, two component link. Well, let me use uh, for second component different color. And uh, so this will be link L, and consider another link L prime, which is. Uh, so also, we, in general, we want to keep uh, orientation. So we, we uh, on the link components, so there'll be circles with a particular orientation, with a particular direction chosen. And we also can see another link, which is uh, just uh, disjoint union is just uh, kind of uh, two are not separated. One can ask a question, is this, so it's kind of, you would say, okay, it's kind of obvious that those link are not equivalent, they're not ambient isotopic, so this is kind of connected. So you cannot separate, there is no, you cannot shuffle this around and separate them. But how, I mean, how would they actually prove this? And it's actually not obvious because, I mean, 
if you just want to use a definition, how would you prove this? Because you, you have to show that there doesn't, doesn't exist any map, and there are kind of a lot of maps like this, so that you cannot bring this configuration to this. So how you, uh, uh, so what you, I mean, usually it's very kind of, if you want to show that something exists, you can just present it. But if you want to show that something doesn't exist, it's a bit hard. So usually you want to, what you want to do is you want to sign some abstraction of this existence. And uh, 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 for, so, so the, 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 uh, so this is where uh, the invariants of links enter one of the questions. Okay, you can also ask a question, you can also say, okay, this is a bit, uh, I mean, here it's an obvious example, but what happens if you have something uh, more complicated? And you cannot, uh, it's actually, it wouldn't be obvious if you cannot disconnect. So let me uh, try to draw you some, uh, some other example. Uh, let's see. Okay, something like this. Okay, this is a, so you can ask the question, uh, is this link equivalent to this link or not? So this is a, I mean, you, you need to spend some time to kind of convince yourself. What, what, can, you, can you separate it or not? But is, is there some, and you also cannot be, I mean, you, it's hard to be uh, sure. Like, what if you are not kind of uh, smart enough, you cannot, so you, you just cannot imagine a way to disconnect this. But is there some, so one can ask, is there some systematic way to answer this kind of questions? So method uh, to show that, uh, for example, two links are not equivalent. So find an invariant uh, so, uh, an invariant, uh, so invariant means it's a, it will be invariant uh, under ambient isotopy. Uh, so, so for each uh, for each link, so let me don't be I, I for each link we are some some numeric some va some value suppose some numerical value such that uh, uh, the value of uh, of this invariant on a certain link is the same as a uh, Value for invariant of L tilde if whenever L is ambient isotopic to L tilde. And uh, so the first step, and the second step, so if you, if you manage to show, if you manage to find some invariant show, and show that these invariants are different for this particular part, then it follows, of course it follows, and it's not, they are not ambient isotopic. In my talk, I present uh, some simple examples of such invariants, which have, uh, to define them, you don't need uh, a lot of prerequisites. And uh, so they, they can be said just in, in geometric terms. And I, like if time allows, I will also consider generalization of such invariants for uh, kind of high dimensional generalizations of such links. Any questions?
uh, when this in this case uh, uh, there is there is actually not uh, uh, not really a problem because uh, yeah so you can argue well in this particular case of R three so we can see links in R three because any uh, uh, yeah any homomorphism of well if it's oriented homomorph well you have to yeah you have to specify that G is, ori is preserves orientation if you specify this then and you any homomorphism of R three into R three can be uh, homotoped to to identity. So this is like, yeah, you can, uh, you can require something uh, weaker, weaker condition. So before I proceed to definition of the invariants, I want to define the certain, uh, the certain important notion of uh, the effort surface. So the effort surface uh, of a link component Li, so I choose a particular link component, so this is a circle embedded in R3, uh, is an oriented Uh, compact also connected surface uh, sigma i so the surface embedded in R3 such that the boundary of the surface is uh, is my link so, for example, if uh, uh, if my link component just looks like a, a knot circle, so I can choose a Zephyr surface to be a just disk, uh, just disk such that its boundary is uh, this uh, circle. So let me. So of course, there are, there, there are questions about existence and uniqueness. And uh, so let me uh, give you kind of a brief answer to these questions without uh, going into uh, kind of proofs, detailed proofs of, this, of these statements. So the following uh, two, rem uh, two remarks. So it's always exist. Uh, and uh, so there are different ways to show this. Uh, so one way to show that uh, is uh, construct by explicit, uh, it can be constructed by an algorithm. I'm not going to go into into very details of the just give me j j just uh, j just give you illustrate this algorithm on a uh, some example. For example, I consider the following oriented uh, link component. I'm sorry, it can be noted in some way. And uh, then what I want to do, I want to uh, I want to sp kind of uh, consider this uh, not diagram, so the projection on a plane where the intersection, the, the, the crossing points are a bit uh, result. So one, one strand goes a bit above the other or under the other. And then uh, using uh, this diagram, I can go, uh, this is, uh, there is something wrong with the orientation. <laughs> So if I go around 
So I start at some point, I go around, and I also follow the arrow. And uh, on, the, on the right of my arrow, I will spawn, uh, I will sp I will spawn some disk. And then I do, then I do the same at other places. So if uh, I, I, I pick other point, which is not already a boundary of some disk, and do the same here. But of course, I don't, uh, this is not really disks. So I have to do some sort of resolution here at this point. At this point, there is, not, there is not a way to connect these disks by or small strips. So if you, if you, you can imagine like this. So if you have a, so lo, here it kind of looks like a, just a flat, uh, just a part of the plane. But if I want to transition from here, this part to this part, I kind of, if I take some line here, I rotate this line by 180 degrees. And then I, as I do a transition to this plane. So uh, in any case, uh, there is a certain algorithm which uh, uh, allows you to explicitly construct a Zephyr surface by given uh, this diagram representation of a node. And uh, so here, as I mentioned, I don't want to go into details here. And uh, so the second question is about uniqueness. And there is a, about uniqueness, there is a following statement. Any two Zypher surfaces are sigma i and uh, sigma i prime uh, of uh, lambda i uh, can be related by a sequence, by a finite sequence of, uh, uh, of the following operations. So the first operation is uh, ambient isotopy, uh, which uh, preserves Li itself. Okay, let me write it like this. So let me. So again, it's uh, it's just uh, uh, so if I have something, this take me uh, this. Uh, on a simple case of a knot, so I can start with just a kind of flat disk here, and then I can uh, uh, do again certain distortion where disk so I kind of uh, continuously deform this disk, but the boundary is still the same, and I do this in a continuous way. Second operation is what is called handle. Addition uh, removal, and uh, this looks like four. So if I have, uh, like in some vicinity of some point, my Zephyr surface uh, looks like this, I can uh, change it. I can add a handle here. It will look like this. Essentially what I do, I take a tube, a uh, circle times an interval, and I cut out two holes here, and I attach this tube like this. And the third is uh, what is called infinity passing move. And uh, again, kind of schematically on the example of a uh, Of an unknot. Uh, so suppose I start with just an ordinary disk, uh, and uh, then I take then I take a big sphere. So, so in general, I take a big sphere which surrounds everything. 
And I, I so I have this, and, I, and, I, and then I attach this handle. At the, at the, sorry, I cut out some circle here and cut out some circle on my sphere and attach a handle. Attach a, attach a cylinder connecting this uh, to uh, cut out circle. So it will look something like this. And then there's a hole here. This is essentially an artifact of uh, what we are, of, because we are doing things in R3 and not on R3. Questions? Yeah, not here, I'm not uh, kind of very precise, but on the geometric level, I hope it's clear what's uh, kind of possible. And one can kind of, uh, well, the, the, the proof of this statement is quite hard, but kind of uh, on the intuitive level, it's uh, kind of every kind of change, uh, you can kind of argue that this is any, any change you can imagine. It's just uh, this uh, three basic operations. Then again, the, the simplest possible link invariant can be defined in terms of this uh, the effort surface as follows. So many of you are probably familiar with this. So linking uh, number of uh, two component link. Again, all our links are oriented here is defined as follows. So it's denoted by LK, L1, LT. So my link has two components, L1 and L2. And uh, is defined as what is called intersection number of a Zeifert surface associated to the first link component and uh, uh, the second uh, the, sec the, second, the second link component. Uh, I have to assume that the, the for generic, generic choice of uh, sigma one. So they are uh, assuming that they intersect tra trans transversally. So what exactly this means? The intersection number. So exactly this means the following. So I have to uh, do a sum uh, over all points so assuming this uh, intersection is a just a finite number of points, I do a sum of all points here, and each point, for each point, I add uh, uh, plus or minus one, depending on a certain orientation. So let me elaborate on this choice. So if uh, if locally situation looks as follows, so I have a sigma one. So sigma the uh, of course, the, uh, the, the choice, the, this, uh, as I mentioned, so this is an uh, oriented surface. So the orientation should be in agreement with the orientation at the boundary. So in particular, if, uh, uh, if I orient, so in this example, if I orient uh, the boundary like this, so the orientation of the surface, which is, uh, can, be, can be determined by a choice of normal vector, uh, is, will be uh, up, upwards. So this is a kind of exterior, the, the upper part is the exterior part, is the exterior part of my surface. And, uh, so suppose uh, the, uh, the Zephyr surface here is oriented like this, and uh, the vicinity of my point A looks as follows, so it kind of pierces the L2, pierces the Zephyr surface uh, 
uh, like this, and then this uh, this uh, should be counted with sine plus one. And if it's uh, the other way around, it goes like this. Then this point should be counted with sine minus one. And uh, so again, this uh, definition, uh, it, uh, so first of all, it's not, uh, so one has to do some uh, checks. So first of all, we kind of used a choice of that surface here. And uh, uh, so one can, so for this to be well-defined, one has to check that this is uh, independent on the choice of uh, uh, the effort surface, and the second question, is it actually invariant? Well, one has to check that this is indeed invariant on the ambient isotopia that we, that we can use to distinguish uh, those examples. Again, I'm, I'm just going to give some uh, kind of geometric idea of why, why this is the case. So the first remark about this definition is it does not depend on the choice of uh, sigma one. So we know, uh, well, you have to believe me, but those are at least, I mean, I will assume those facts to be true, that how, what, what is the ambiguity? We know what is ambig the possible ambiguities of uh, the choice of uh, the first surface. And uh, so we have to check that this is invariant under uh, those, uh, uh, those basic uh, relations which we had. So in particular, uh, essentially the most non-trivial part is, is uh, well, it's also trivial, but uh, so for example, the, the first part we want to check that this invariant under ambient isotopy, which uh, kind of deforms my Zephyr surface. So uh, suppose, uh, so I need, I want to, uh, so essentially what can happen here that uh, we have to be afraid that there are kind of, once we do some deformations, there are some points here which can disappear or appear again. But essentially what, the only thing which happens is that they can disappear always in pairs or appear. So we can have a, a for example, situation like this. So we start kind of moving the Zephyr surface. So this is a, a L2 is kept the same, but we kind of we deform the Zephyr surface. So this no longer intersect L2. And uh, so we can lose one point, but we always will lose it together with another one. And they come, and as you can see, so if this is orientation like this, this comes, they came, this point came into the sum with a minus one, and this came to the sum with plus one. So the total sum is still, uh, is still zero, so this is unchanged. And similarly, so you can also argue that the adding handles in this infinity passing move are also uh, can be performed such that it doesn't change because you can essentially always this tube, you can make it essentially very thin, or similar it's very thin and you can always move it around so it just doesn't intersect. This, this three tubes that we add doesn't intersect with the second component at all. So this is uh, uh, some basic idea of why this is invariant uh, under the choice of sigma one. And uh, uh, Another property, okay, and uh, this is also invariant uh, under ambient 
isotopy of uh, link itself. So essentially, the argument will be uh, uh, similar. So instead of instead of moving kind of for a Zephyr surface, we can move uh, one one of the link one of the link components, and the argument essentially will be uh, very similar. So I'm not going to repeat it. And uh, another nice property that also this is. Uh, Defined in a, some sort of so it's defined for a two-component link, but it's defined in a certain asymmetric way. So it has some preference between uh, first and uh, second link component. But what is actually true is that uh, this number is symmetric. And uh, Again, let me give you an idea why this is the case. So you have to check that the difference is zero. So the difference is uh, intersection number of sigma one with L two minus intersection number of sigma two my, uh, with uh, L one. But since L two is the boundary of, sig uh, of sigma two and L one is the boundary of sigma one, this is a, can be understood. So the, all points here together with, po with points here, including uh, taking account proper, proper signs, is a, are points which are contained in the boundary of sigma sigma one intersected with sigma two. But this is just uh, an intersection of uh, an intersection of a pair of surfaces. So this is a, contains either circles, so this is joint union either circles which don't have any boundary, or it can contain intervals whose boundary a pair of points, but the, this pair of points will always contribute with opposite signs because they will come with uh, opposite orientation. And uh, so they will always cancel in this uh, sum of points taking account of the rotation. So this is zero. Questions? Uh, one of the component is what? Uh, uh, I mean, one of the component is not going uh, yes. horizontal, and in this case, just zero. I mean, this, this intersection can be empty. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. There are many definitions of this. Yeah, this can be given by integral, by, by Gauss integral, explicit. Uh, so they, they can be given by some explicit uh, f formula. Uh, so you kind of integrate over pairs of uh, points. Like this, you put a point here and point Y here on the second component, and you can uh, write some sort of integral. Uh, so this uh, kind of I understand these points as the vectors in Euclidean space. So you write some. Uh, I'm probably going to mess uh, some some of this. This is probably wrong, but uh, something like this. Or is it, I mean, maybe this is even. I think, I think this is a, uh, uh, sorry, what? Uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write something wrong here, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, uh, and the, the Gauss definition actually appears to something uh, in physics. Yes. 
Okay, so suppose we convince ourselves that this is a well-defined environment. Okay, so can we use uh, to figure out the simple examples? So here, uh, let me choose this to be a, let me choose the Zephyr surface for the second guy here. So here there is no intersection, so the linking number is just zero, obviously. So here, like this, so uh, the orientation is uh, such that uh, the normal uh, vector points at us, and uh, so this uh, comes so that way, so the linking is uh, plus one. So okay, this is zero, this, uh, this is a difference, so they're necessarily uh, not equivalent. And what about this guy? So I choose, a, again, the second component to pick a Zypher surface. And after a bit of, uh, well, this is a, so if you move this uh, a bit around, so you can only, uh, yeah. So yeah, you can uh, imagine, that, so you have intersection here and here. And everything else, uh, yeah. So this goes up and this goes below. This, this goes below and this up. Everything else is up. So this is, uh, 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 this is plus two. So they all, they all, they all, so we, uh, I mean, suppose we uh, have this definition, then we proved, uh, then they are, they're easy to check that they are indeed a non equivalent. Yes, that's right. So you can, uh, the other, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, kind of, I wanted to, to do this more geometrically, but you can use uh, just a plane projection, and essentially, if you, uh, so suppose you, you go, uh, so you, you, you go around one of the link components and you look at the uh, crossings. And you look at the crossings and suppose I pick uh, my, I go around L1 and I only look, uh, I, actually it's enough to only look at under crossings. So if my under crossings is like this, uh, if the second if the second component passes below uh, in this direction, this is uh, uh, gives me minus one. And uh, if I have a if the second component undercrosses and goes to the left, this gives me plus one. And I just do the sum of a. Uh, uh, some of, of these uh, crossings when I go around L1 here. Yes, you can uh, check this. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, here it's obvious that the, the linking is zero, but here, well, you have to show that, uh, you have to prove that you cannot deform it in any way, because the, the diagram is not unique. You can uh, always uh, change your diagram. The, 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 there can be different diagrams which can represent. Uh, yes. Yes. Well, for one, so, uh, so this is uh, specifically defined for a pair, uh, for a link component with two components. You can you can define uh, what is called like linking uh, self-linking number, but for this you need to use uh, some additional uh, additional structure on your on your on your link component. What is called framing. Then you can define linking number with itself. 
but you, you need to use uh, kind of a, sort of uh, the, the framing. Or, or in other words, you, you need to consider this to be a sort of circle, but a ribbon, a small ribbon. Then you can define, then you can send the definition of the linker to a self-linking number. But, uh, but I don't, I'm not uh, using this here. So now, uh, so this was something which uh, kind of the basic invariant, which is defined uh, yeah, for kind of for, for a two-component link, and uh, is a basic abstraction. Um, simple, it's the simplest abstraction, which tells you that this cannot be uh, the, the, two, the components cannot be separated. So let me consider. But well, suppose you have something uh, like this. This is what is called uh, Borromean rings. So, so Borromean is actually was a, some wealthy family living in the north of Italy, and they had a, they had this was a part of the coat of arms. And uh, uh, so this is a three component link. I don't remember if I mentioned, but this is also has a, uh, this link. This particular link has a, a nice name. Uh, it's called Hopf link. So here, so if I so let's me component one, component two, and component three. It's easy to see that if I just take a pair, each pair they can be uh, they can be easily separated, and indeed uh, this also which is also in agreement with the fact if you calculate the linking number for each uh, pair, this will be zero. So is there is there some simple is there a kind of similar simple invariant which gives uh, which which is something gives something on trivial here and in a, in a zero. When they are all, when and a zero for the situation when they are all uh, separated, uh, so that we can uh, uh, we can we can we can find some sort of uh, quantity which tells us how the triples of circles uh, can be uh, uh, can be linked together. And uh, so the answer to this question is can be given by the called uh, Milner triple linking number. Okay, for some historical reasons, it's uh, usually denoted by mu bar. They define for three component links, and uh, so. But actually, to define it, we want to assume that all pairwise linking numbers are zero. And so this is a, the case in this example. But uh, this can be defined for any for any for any three component link, which satisfies this condition. The pairwise they can be. Uh, uh, 
they can be separated. The, well, the pairwise link, not necessarily separated, but the pairwise linking number is, is, is zero. So this will be, uh, well, let me write in this kind of uh, first kind of mysterious way, but uh, I will elaborate. So the first part is, uh, will be a, a number, again, counted with signs, particular signs, a number of intersection points uh, of the triple of uh, the effort surfaces. So this is okay because they, these, uh, the two surfaces, in general, they transversely intersect over, uh, over a line, as we've seen. But if you take a line, generally it intersects with the third surface of a point. And uh, so the choice of signs is determined uh, by a, the choice of signs is determined by, again by orientations. So let me uh, try to write some picture or draw some picture. So this is how uh, vicinity of a intersection point can look like. So this is uh, will be a uh, surface surface sigma one, and uh, the blue will be surface surface sigma two. Violet will be a surface surface or sigma three, and this is my intersection point. And uh, suppose the orientation is like this, so this is a orientation for sigma three. Uh, this is orientation, uh, this normal vector to sigma two, and this will be a normal vector uh, to, uh, a sigma one, so this is the first, this is the second, and this is the third. So this, uh, in this particular case, this will come coloration plus one, but if I have a kind of, uh, so if this is a standard ordering of the basis vectors uh, in R3, but if this, uh, uh, if I have something like this instead, then this will come with minus one. And uh, uh, so the other terms point as follows. So we'll uh, sum over pairs of points, so the first point will be in the intersection of L1 with sigma two. The second point will be in the intersection of L1 with sigma three. And I only over some of pairs of points which satisfy a certain ordering condition, which I will explain in a second. And uh, yeah, each pair contributes with plus and minus one and this plus and minus one is determined by, uh, by the signs associated to this pair of points uh, in the same way, the pair of points in the intersection of the link components with Zephyr surface in the same way as uh, we had it before. And the ordering is defined as follows. So I take, I consider my points in a, 
so this is so I, I take my link component uh, so link component L1 and I pick a particular base point and by picking this point I can do I can order points here so starting from here to here and uh, so the correct ordering is for example the correct the I do I get a contribution from the point from the pair of points if uh, if B is uh, uh, la goes later than A so I have a configuration for example a pair of points can contribute if I have configuration of this uh, type. So this is, uh, I have something L1, this, this L1 goes, uh, in, uh, pierces through uh, sigma 2 here and sigma 3 here. So for example, if, uh, if orientation on L1 is like this and orientations on sigma 2 and sigma 3 are in agreement, then this uh, pair of points will contribute plus 1. And uh, similarly, I will define contributions T231 and T312 just by uh, cyclically permuting indices 1, 2, and 3 here. And uh, so one can argue uh, by doing, uh, so there is an argument, by doing the kind of similar argument, so I don't have time for this, but one can argue that this is indeed invariant. Uh, so it's invariant both under, so it's independent of the choice of Zypher surfaces. And also invariant under uh, under uh, uh, under ambient isotopy of the link itself, and the way to to check this is uh, essentially so there can be uh, certain uh, differ you you can consider uh, certain basic deformations, uh, and the you can show that the, the the contributions to different pieces here can can be traded off when you, once you do the deformation, but the whole the total sum is invariant. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have time to to uh, yeah. I was planning to do this uh, to I mean to argue why this is invariant, but I don't have time. But let me just uh, uh, give an example. So I have to finish. Just uh, give me. Let me give you an example of the calculation of this invariant for these Borromean rings. So there is a way to. Uh, uh, and represent the Brahmian rings as follows. And so I'll just do this and I stop. So instead of writing uh, drawing it like this, I can draw and then grow it like this. I can so that uh, essentially in a, each each component is a serve is an oval uh, line in a in a particular x, y, or z uh, standard planes. So the, then the, uh, this will be the upper surface is just interior of the uh, uh, of the of, of the of, of the oval line in this kind of horizontal uh, z plane, and this will be uh, sigma one, and they intersect, of course. So they they intersect along this line and this the last guy interior of this oval and they will act like this and so of course the the violet oval and uh, the green oval they will intersect along this interval so there will be a single point in the intersection, in the triple intersection of Riemanns, of uh, Zephyr surfaces. And uh, it's easy to see there is no, so if you go, for example, along this uh, link component, we only have intersection of this link component with uh, uh, points 
with sigma two, but not with sigma one. So there will be no actually pairs uh, of intersection of points both in sigma two and in sigma three. So there will be all other uh, contributions will be mu is uh, one. And of course, uh, for this, uh, in this case, the mu is obviously, mu bar is obviously zero. Okay, of course, I didn't have time to go into high dimensional analogs, so they're kind of analogs of surface links. Kind of the, the, uh, you can consider some Riemann surface embedded into R4, four dimensional space. And uh, so they're also quite natural objects, and you can construct new variants uh, in a similar way. And, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm out of time, so I'll stop here. <laughs>